So we're going to quickly whiz through structural features in this mini lesson. So most people know what language features are or poetic devices. They're things that writers use that are language techniques to help enhance whatever they're writing. And as well as there being lots of language techniques, there's also structural techniques that you can use. So structural feature is just something to do with the shape or the organization of the text that the writer has deliberately done to try and affect the audience. And the effect that they're going for is specific to them and their purpose and the thing that they're writing. So even though there's a lot of different techniques and features, you also have to understand what is the writer trying to do in that particular moment to be able to analyze them properly. So these structural features are really important for language analysis in English language exams. They might be helpful for things like poetry or novel analysis. They're also useful for your own creative writing. There's a million different reasons why you should learn them. Certain questions on certain exams like paper one, question three, AQA English language GCSE, that one actually is just all about structural features. So sometimes in an exam, you actually have a whole question that is completely just about these techniques here. So yeah, I'm just gonna whiz through a few of them then. So the first thing, the opening is always dramatic and important. It hooks the reader in and you wanna think about why is it interesting, exciting, important, significant, does it outline themes? Does it throw us into action in some way? There's always a reason why the writer opens with the particular words that they do. So you wanna think about that. Equally, the ending is equally important. So why do they end in the way that they do? What are the you know final moods or feelings that we're left with? What kinds of opinions and attitudes do we now hold about the story or the text that they created? Focal points are super important. So a focal point is when someone zooms in on something. You can think about it like a camera. So if you're reading a story and you're reading a paragraph in that story, you want to think about is the camera of the scene zoomed in to a tiny little detail or is it really zoomed out? Is it wide focus or narrow focus? Are they looking at a whole beach or are they looking at a single pebble or a crab on the beach? For punctuation, there's so many different types of punctuation and you want to learn how to use them and also how to analyze them. So this is just a starting point with punctuation. Time shift is important too. Tense can also be important. If you're really precise, you might learn the words of tenses, like how can you identify a conditional tense or imperfect tense and what are those tenses used for? If that's a bit much for you because you feel overwhelmed by grammar, you can just think about, is it past, present or future that they're writing in and why are they doing that? Are there any time shifts as well and why? The length of paragraphs and of sentences, always super important. If a writer uses a deliberately long or short paragraph or a deliberately long or short sentence, there's always a reason. So that is a really important way to, um, sorry, spelling error. <laughs> that's a really important way to, uh, you know, analyze. You can also go into these sentence types, so get used to the types of sentence in more detail. Listing is always a really good structural device. There's different types of listing as well, so make sure you understand those. Tripartite structure is a specific kind of listing where you list three things together, and that always makes it very memorable. So if you find a list of three, that's been done for a specific reason. So you wanna think why has the writer drawn attention to these three things? The perspective and the, the narr uh, narrative perspective of the narrator is also really important. So th the easiest way to think about these is first or third person, but then you get more precise versions. So is it third person omniscient, third person limited? If it's first person, what do we know about the narrator? If it's limited or omniscient, what do we know about the world? So you want to think about why the writer chose that perspective. Flashback and flash forward, um, quite easy to understand. They're used to give more kind of angles and depth to a story. Tension and pace is also very important. So any good story really should build tension at some point. 
So it's almost like anything that you're analysing will have tension somewhere in it. So it's always a good one to fall back on. Mood and tone can take you a very long time to get used to. The mood is the feeling within the text. The tone is the writer's attitude to the text. So they're quite different. Um. Make sure, sorry, my dog's in the background. Make sure that you know um, what you're doing with both mood and tone. And finally, a cyclical structure is where you start and end in a similar place. Only very specific texts have this one, so it's not always applied to everything. But if you do have a text that does that, it's a very important technique to pick up on. And there's always a really clear reason. So that one's a good one for some specific text to look at. So yeah, we just kind of whizzed through these really quickly. Hopefully that all made sense to you. You can go to scribbly.com if you want more help with English language, English literature, essay writing, exam technique, example answers, and so on. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully you feel a lot better with structural features, and I'll see you guys soon in a future lesson. Bye for now.